Justice. So, <clears throat> hello everybody. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. I, I want to speak to you about the work that I'm doing and the recent book that I wrote called Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think. Uh, I run a, a few different organizations. One organization is called Singularity University. It's in the middle of Silicon Valley. And at this university, we study all of the most rapidly growing technologies, the, what we call the accelerating or exponential technologies. These are technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, synthetic biology, networks, sensors, infinite computing. And these are the technologies that are growing more and more. It's the technologies that we use on our cell phones, that we use to do extraordinary kinds of businesses today. They're also the technologies that allow a single individual today to have more power than governments or the largest corporations had just 20 or 30 years ago. I run another organization called the XPRIZE Foundation uh, in Los Angeles, and the XPRIZE is focused on solving the world's biggest problems. And it's the notion that, you know, a thousand years ago, if you wanted to do something for South America or Mexico or the United States or on a large scale, you had to be, you know, the president or the king or the queen. There was, you know, it took just a few number, of, a few people had the ability to affect anything on a large scale. A hundred years ago, it was the industrialists, the CEOs of the largest companies. Today, anyone who has a passion in their heart who wants to make a difference can. They have access to this extraordinary technologies and have access to um, capital and resources like never before. So in my book, Abundance, I wrote about the fact that technology is the force that takes what we used to think of as scarce and makes it abundant. So let me give a very simple example. If there was an orange tree, and I went and I grabbed the oranges from the lower branches, and if I grabbed all the oranges I could reach, all of a sudden oranges went from being abundant to being scarce, until I invent a piece of technology called the ladder that gives me a higher reach, and now I can reach more and more oranges, and I get access to more and more. This is the case over and over and over again. Uh, it turns out that, uh, for example, the cover of my book is wrapped with aluminum because it turned out that 150 years ago, 200 years ago, in the in 1840s, aluminum was the most precious metal on the planet. It was worth more than gold and platinum. And the reason was, even though the Earth has plenty of aluminum, all the aluminum on Earth is attached to oxygen and silicates, and there's no pure aluminum you can go and dig out of the ground. And it was so energetically difficult, so much, took so much energy to extract the aluminum from the bauxite that it was more scarce than gold and platinum. And then we invented a technology called electrolysis um, that used electricity to remove the aluminum from the bauxite. And today, aluminum is every place. And we have aluminum foil, aluminum cans, aluminum airplanes. We don't think anything about aluminum. So it went from being scarce to abundant. And I think about how this is going to be happening across the board. So, for example, energy. We talk about energy being a scarce resource in different places. But the Earth is bathed in 5,000 times more energy from the sun than we use as a species in a year. We have plenty of energy. It's just not in a fully usable form yet. And there's amazing breakthroughs going on right now in the global production rate of solar panels is exploding exponentially at the same time that the cost of kilowatt hours from solar is dropping uh, rapidly. And the projection, at least for the United States, is the US could be uh, 50 to 100% solar within the next 20 years. And of course, one of the things that gets me excited is that the poorest nations on the planet are the sunniest nations. And so they have the potential to have abundant energy. And if you have abundant energy, you also have abundant water. We talk about water scarcity and water wars, but the Earth is bathed in water. It's you know, two thirds of the Earth is water. It's just that you know, 97.5 percent is salt water, two percent are the ice caps, and we fight over a, a half a percent of the water. But there's again amazing technologies that will convert that salt water to clean drinking water. Nanomaterials like graphene, uh, technologies like. Uh, uh, like Slingshot from Dean Kamen, 
And these are technologies that have the potential to take water around the world from being scarce to being abundant for everybody. And it turns out that half of the disease burden on Earth, half of the problems people face from healthcare is due to unclean drinking water. So if we have clean drinking water, it eliminates half of the disease on the planet. So we talked about scarce, uh, about abundance of energy, abundance of water. You know, what I find incredibly powerful is the notion that a, you know, a teenager in the poorest countries in Africa or in India, if they've got, you know, access to a to a cell phone, they've got better mobile communications than the president of the United States or Mexico had 30 years ago. And if that, if that teenager in Mumbai has you know, access to Google, they have more access to knowledge and information than the president had 20 years ago. Right? They're living in a world of information and communications abundance. Uh, moving on, we at the XPRIZE Foundation, we have launched two large global competitions to try and bring about uh, abundance in healthcare and abundance in learning. In the healthcare space, what we've done is we've announced something called the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. And so uh, it was two and a half years ago that I was on stage at the largest conference in the United States, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. I was there with Paul Jacobs, the chairman of Qualcomm, and we announced a $10 million prize offered to the first team who could build a handheld mobile device. Um, not for a doctor or for a nurse, but for a mother or a father at two o'clock in the morning when their kid is sick. And this would be a device that uses exponential technologies, a device that I could speak to. It has artificial intelligence. It understands what you're saying. It can ask you questions about, you know, what did you eat? How are you feeling yesterday? Whatever the relevant questions are. It's got on it uh, what we call lab on a chip. This microfluidics where I can cough on the phone and it can do the RNA or DNA analysis of the bacteria in your saliva, or you can do a, a finger or blood prick and it can do your blood chemistries. But in success, it will be able to diagnose you or anyone as good as a group of doctors. So this is what I call the democratization of healthcare, where healthcare becomes available to the poorest, equally to the wealthiest. Um, we also launched something called the Global Learning X Prize. And this is an X Prize that is going to help us bring education and learning to a billion people on the planet. So today on planet Earth, we have nearly a billion people who cannot read or write or do basic math. Of those, two thirds are women, and a quarter of them, 250 million, are kids and they live in parts of the world that we will never ever build schools or teach enough teachers. We just can't scale physical buildings and people fast enough to do that. So what we've done is we announced uh, two weeks ago uh, at the United Nations General Assembly and at the Clinton Global Initiative an X Prize for $15 million asking teams to build a piece of software uh, that could operate on any smartphone or tablet that was intelligent enough as a piece of software to understand a child's interests, what sports star, what color, what movie star it likes, understand its language abilities, what it knows and what it doesn't know, and then be able to engage that uh, student enough to be able to take that child, no matter where they are, from illiteracy to reading, writing, and numeracy in 18 months. And so we announced that, we expect a winner in the next three years, and then we're gonna put that software on every tablet and every phone produced. So that's a quick overview of abundance. Perhaps we can take some questions and answers now. Can you pinpoint or mention three cutting edge trends that are gonna be with us in the years to come? Sure, so <clears throat> in terms of cutting edge trends, one of the biggest right now uh, that is just getting going is the use of the crowd. In other words, it's the ability for a single individual in this hyper-connected world to reach out to everyone else who has a common interest. And what does that mean? There's the whole field of crowdfunding. 
with uh, platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo where I can say, you know, I have a new product I want to produce. Anybody wants it, it's 100 bucks. If I get, you know, 10,000 people who want it, I'm going to produce it. And so it's the ability to have the crowd generate uh, advanced revenue. So in 2015, next year, there's going to be $15 billion in crowdfunding. By 2020, that'll grow to $100 billion in crowdfunding. We also have the ability to use the crowd to solve problems. Um, one of the related trends is that we're going from about 2 billion people connected online in 2010 to 5 billion people connected online in 2020. 3 billion new minds are connecting like never before. These represent a huge uh, opportunity for entrepreneurs. So your ability to connect with those entrepreneurs um, and use crowd, the crowd to help you um, is, uh, is very important. Um, I think another big trend is 3D printing. Uh, I'm very involved in 3D printing. We're going to see 3D printing uh, entering every field. It's exploding in the marketplace right now uh, where you can 3D print with 200 different materials, plastic, rubber, metals, glass, even human cells. And the ability to uh, man learn how to manufacture things very differently than the old way. And then one of the biggest trends coming is going to be the use of artificial intelligence, the use of AI, uh, where artificial intelligence is on the cloud and computers will understand what you're asking and be able to search its knowledge base and give you an answer. Do we have another, another question? Please. Uh, I imagine that uh, in the Singularity University, you have uh, seen realized a lot of dreams of the students, right? So uh, about, about you, uh, what's the, the next dream you want to realize? Uh, great question. Thank you. Yes, um, uh, we have an amazing uh, group of, of students uh, at Singularity University, and, and they are you know, their mission is to start a company that can impact a billion people in 10 years. That's the, the metric. I'm working on two big projects right now that I'm very excited about. Uh, one of them is a company called Planetary Resources, and it's a company that is, uh, actually has its first launch next week. Uh, we're, we're building spacecraft that can go to, uh, to space and then look for asteroids that are coming close to the Earth and find them and then fly out to them, image them, prospect them, and claim them, uh, there are a certain number of asteroids that come very close to the Earth that are very, well, uh, very rich in fuels, uh, methane, hydrogen, oxygen, in uh, metals, construction metals like nickel, iron, cobalt, and strategic metals like uh, platinum and palladium, iridium, osmium. And the ability to mine those asteroids and extract the materials uh, is another concept of abundance that, you know, if you think materials, platinum is scarce on the earth, perhaps, but it's also abundant in other places. The other company I'm working on, which we announced earlier this year, is a company called Human Longevity Inc., HLI, and our mission is to make 100 years old in U60. Our goal is to add 30 to 40 healthy years on everybody's life. And we're doing that. We've built the largest genome sequencing facility on the planet, uh, and we're using stem cells now. And the notion is that we have the ability to understand why some people live longer than others, why some get cancer and some do not, why some get cardiovascular disease and others do not, why some get Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases and others do not. And then to begin to, all of that is in your genome. All of that is in your genetic code. And understanding that, the big data play, if you would, of, our goal is to sequence millions of people and get enough information and data that we're able to really fundamentally understand that. So just time for maybe one more question. Um, all right, then. Well, uh, we, okay, we have one question here. Yes, please. How do you envision the world in 10, 20 years? That's a great question to close out on. Thank you. So I, someone who believes we're heading towards a world of abundance, and what I mean by that it's not a life of luxury for everybody. I don't mean Louis Vuitton purses and Ferraris for all the, you know, the women and men on the planet, but the ability to meet people's basic needs where everybody on the planet has, at, at a minimum, 
access to energy and water and health care and learning and knowledge. And you know, we are all born with the same basic 24 hours in a day, you know, 60 minutes in an hour, right? That's what the poorest person on the planet and the wealthiest person on the planet have in common. It's how we use that time that matters. And today, a wealthy person can you know, fly in a private jet and avoid the lines at the airport or avoid having to walk or drive. So it's how we use our time. And in parts of Africa today, you know, if you have health care issues or need water, you spend your day walking down to the river to try and get some water or get firewood to cook a fire or walking to the village next door to try and find a doctor. The ability to provide the basics rapidly, where this becomes your teacher, your physician, where energy is available to everybody, and because that we have available water to everybody, this for me is the world of abundance that I see in the next 20 years, where everybody's basic needs, every man, woman, and child's basic needs are being met. Thank you, a pleasure to be here.